Keaton Paul, the host of All About Fitness. Welcome to episode 105 of All About Fitness. On this episode, it's a quick fit tip. Before I go into the fit tip, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you who've been listening. And for those of you that have dropped a few comments, thank you. That's I'm overwhelmed. That is so, uh, so generous and nice. What I'm trying to do with All About Fitness is share the best information, the best exercise science, just the best overall fitness information that can help you enhance and improve your overall quality of life. I'm going to take a moment here to say thank you to Keegan. Keegan, it's really a pleasure to meet you a few weeks ago. Thanks for taking the time to attend my workshop. And I really want to say thank you, too, for the email suggestion you gave. That's a cool topic, and I'm going to try to get to it. I think you're going to like a couple of the next shows coming up since you suggested that. Another young woman I'd like to say hi to is Allie. Allie, you're going to be do awesome with the personal training exam. You're really going to enjoy that as a career field. So once you do pass it, and you will, please uh, write back and let me know how you did. I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Also want to give a shout out to Vance Hines. Dude, you're doing awesome. I am so impressed. You are just killing it. And you're hopefully motivating other people to do the same. Finally, I want to say howdy to the folks at Catalyst Fitness out in Buffalo, New York. I recently went there and taught a workshop and really just had an amazing time. That's a great facility, and you have Chris and Jordan uh, kind of leading the way. Well, they are leading the way and making sure that Buffalo can have the ultimate workout experience. Now to today's topic. You know, the one thing that, that kind of interests me is, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a history buff. I studied a little bit in college. I was almost my major, but I also had a lot of other almost majors, so not a big deal. But I love learning about just history, and especially about the history of the fitness industry. You know, I've mentioned this a few times before, so if you've heard it, you know, bear with me. But you have to realize the modern fitness industry is not quite 40 years old. You know, in the 70s, people thought strength training, you know, athletes, you know, coaches thought strength training would slow you down. Nolan Ryan was one of the first professional athletes to strength train on a regular basis. In the 80s, it picked up a little more steam. And now you have professional athletes and a lot of college and high school athletes conditioning year round to get in top shape for their sport. Now, athletes have a benefit because they work with a strange coat. Athletes have a benefit, well, especially at the higher levels, because they're working with a strength coach that is designing a program for their specific needs. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we all had our own strength coach or our own personal trainer? For some people, that might be possible, and you know the benefits of that. But for others, you might not see, see the benefit, or it might just be too expensive, and there's nothing wrong with that. So you know, what I want to talk about today is video-based workouts. You know, for a number of years, they've been extremely popular. And I'm going to date myself here, and, and I don't mind doing that. For those of you that don't know, the first song ever played on MTV was Video Kill the Radio Star by The Buggles. Actually, now that I think about it, I'll have a link down to that in the show notes. So you can see where we've evolved from. And while it may be true that video did indeed kill the radio star, starting in the early 80s with the advent of cassette tapes, video cassette tapes, and if you don't really understand what that is, you need to ask an apparent <laughs> because once upon a time, we could not download, uh, download movies, download uh, videos from the internet. People actually had to go to a store and get a large cassette tape and they played it at a VCR where it always flashed 12 o'clock. Some of you may remember that. Some of you may just see funny old boxes laying up in the attic, but that's really, you know, what, how people watch movies or consumed, you know, video content as recent as 30, 40 years ago. One of the most popular videotapes or some of the most popular videotapes that were sold to directly to consumers were workout videos. You know, when people couldn't make it to the gym, workout videos were extremely popular and it was their only access to a knowledgeable fitness instructor. You know, they could pop in a tape and, and work out in the comfort of their, of their own home. And it's interesting to note that even though video formats have completely changed in the past 10 years, there's still a strong desire to be able to exercise from the comfort of one's own home, or at least in a small workout facility if people live in an apartment community. You know, it's funny that the, you know, VHS no longer exists, and people can now go online and find a plethora of workout videos, whether free, whether a little workout tidbits on Instagram, or by downloading through a service such as Daily Burn. You know, some instructors that do these videos are awesome, and they have a wide, extensive range of knowledge, they you know, have studied, they've gone to school, they've earned multiple certifications, and they have their credentials to help you. But then again, there are some other video-based trainers who are more suited for a gym fails video. 
meaning they don't really understand what they're doing. And here's something to pay attention to, folks. When you listen to some of the researchers on All About Fitness, guys like Brad Schoenfeld or Martin Gabala, they, they will never give you a definitive answer. They'll say, well, based on the evidence, this is what we've seen. So we think this is the case, and we think this is how the body adapts to a certain exercise stimulus. So the more education somebody has, in my experience, the less likely they will, they will give you a definitive answer of do this, do this, do this. So you always want to you know, look for an instructor, whether in life or in video, who gives you options because not everybody is going to respond to exercise the same way. So you need to keep that in mind. You know, does an instructor on a video have a degree or at the very least a certification? Another thing to consider is the level of intensity. If you're a gym rat who goes to the gym most days of the week, you know, and there are some of those days when you just can't make it there and you want a good hard sweat, well, you can jump in at almost any workout video you can download or find on the internet. Because you're fit, you can work at a high work rate, even when at home. This is extremely important, though, for those of you who might be newbies or might be coming back into fitness after some time away. First of all, welcome back. We miss you, and we're glad you're here. So thanks for coming back in, and thanks for listening to All About Fitness. But here's the point. You don't necessarily need to do high-intensity exercise to get benefits. If you're new and you're you know, in an all-fire hurry to try to you know, lose some weight or get in shape, whatever, you have to understand that exercise is stress on the body. So whether you're you know, starting an exercise program in a studio or via your phone in an online app, make sure that you go at a level that is appropriate for your needs. I'll say that again. You want to work out at a level, and that, that stands true for real life too, you always want to work out at a level that's appropriate for your needs. Yes, the workout should challenge you. Yes, the workout should make you just a little bit uncomfortable, but that discomfort means that your body is doing something new. That means the exercise is having an effect. So no matter how you work out, you always want exercise to be a little challenging. Sometimes it can be a lot challenging, but sometimes just a, just a hair challenging. You need to apply different levels of, levels of stress to your body. So I'm saying all that to mean that if you're new or coming back from some time off, go at an intensity, go at a level of intensity that is appropriate for you. Don't just try to pick up where you left off 5, 10, 15 years ago. Your muscle memory doesn't work like that. You will be able to do some of the old moves, but you have to give yourself time to adapt. You know, when you look for videos, you may, you know, for those of you that are new and looking for an appropriate workout for your level, you may want to look at videos that focus on overall conditioning and definitely avoid the high intensity workouts. For now, for at least the first two or three months. After a few months of the consistent effort, when you're starting to feel stronger, you're starting to notice an effect, then you can step it up with harder workouts. But if you try to go too hard too quickly, I can almost guarantee you, and I really do not like guaranteeing anything when it comes to fitness, but no matter whether you're doing it live or in a video, if you go too hard too quickly, there's a very good likelihood you might end up injured, and nobody wants that. So when you're looking for a video coach, make sure you find one that's right for your needs, that offers level of motivation, and be honest with yourself. Some people are going to love a drill sergeant yelling at them to do every single thing. While other people may not like that and just want somebody to kind of coach them and guide them through the workout experience. So that holds true whether you're looking for a trainer in real life or an online trainer. You know, look for somebody that matches your needs. So that's my little quick fit tip for the day. Online or workout videos are awesome, but find the right one that's great for your skill set. Now, one of the things I'm trying to do here, too, is introduce you to some new, uh, some new literature or give you some information about research. So for this quick fit tip, my research topic is core training. Down below in the show notes, I have a link to Dr. Stuart McGill. And I had met Dr. McGill on a few episodes back. And if you really like core training or you want to learn more about back pain, then you definitely want to check that out. The article I have posted below is based on Dr. McGill's research. It's the best core training methods or the most effective core training methods based on his almost 30 years of research. And there might be a crunch variation in there, but I think you'll be very surprised at some of the exercises that Dr. McGill and others doing the same research consider core training. A lot of times people may think core training is sit-ups, planks, crunches, laying on the floor. No, core training should be done from your feet. And the article from Dr. McGill down below lays out a perfect example of why that is and how you can do certain workouts to help push your overall level of strength. Because we have to look at it, everything that attaches 
any muscle that it moves our spine, any muscle that moves our pelvis, even any muscle that can affect movement of the shoulders could arguably be considered a core muscle. So a core training workout is a global workout where you're using all your body parts, most of the time standing on your feet. The best way to train your core, or I shouldn't say the best, one of the more effective ways to train your core is by standing up and doing a lot of lifting, being on your feet. Exercises like the deadlift, kettlebell swing, overhead press from a standing position could all theoretically be considered core exercises. And the link down below in the show notes will help you understand why. That's it for this episode of All About Fitness. My quick fit tip, look for a video instructor that's right for you and understand a little bit more about how your body works so you can do effective core training exercises for your needs. And as always, if you have any ideas or suggestions about a, about a guest, I really want to thank you for sending them in. I will be following up. I, I, I program out a few weeks at a time. So as I'm looking down the line for fu future interviews, I'll definitely take your suggestions into consideration. And if you have an idea for me to, to have somebody to have on, please, by all means, reach out. Pete at PeteMcCallFitness.com. That's Pete at PeteMcCallFitness.com. My Twitter handle is Pete underscore MC Fitness. Twitter is Pete underscore MC Fitness. And my Instagram tag is at Pete McCall Fitness. That's, Pete, that's at Pete McCall Fitness for Instagram. Thanks for stopping by, and I look forward to having you join me for future episodes of All About Fitness.